Today's NICU nugget is on twins, or when one pregnancy produces two offspring. You've heard all these terms before, identical, fraternal, monozygotic, dizygotic, monoamniotic, dichorionic, but what do these terms all actually mean? Well, hear us out today and you'll never be confused again. The first distinction I want to make is between identical and fraternal twins. Identical twins share exactly the same DNA, exactly the same genetic makeup. So identical twins will look exactly the same or at least exceedingly similar. Whereas fraternal twins obviously share some of the DNA, but they basically share the same amount of DNA as any two siblings born to the same two parents would share. So generally fraternal twins will obviously resemble each other a little bit, just like any two siblings do, but not to the extent of the identical twins. Let's start with fraternal twins. Fraternal twins happen when two separate eggs are fertilized by two separate sperm, so a sperm each. And then each fertilized egg, which is called a zygote, so in this case two zygotes, both implant into the uterus. And then those zygotes eventually develop into an embryo and a baby. So in this case, these twins are dizygotic, as in there were two zygotes that implanted into the uterus. The zygote itself carries the machinery to make the chorion, which eventually develops into the placenta, and also carries the machinery to make the amniotic sac. The mother doesn't produce the placenta or the amniotic sac. The zygote itself carries that machinery. So because it is a dizygotic pregnancy, each zygote will make its own chorion or its own placenta, so it's dichorionic, and each zygote will also make its own amniotic sac. So the pregnancy would be considered dizygotic because there are two fertilized eggs, dichorionic because each fertilized egg has its own placenta, and diamniotic, which means that each zygote also has its own amniotic sac. So I'm going to repeat that. By definition, all fraternal twins are dizygotic, dichorionic, and diamniotic. Interestingly, in the last two decades, the rate of fraternal twins or fraternal pregnancies has gone up a lot, and it's now sitting somewhere about 23 pregnancies per 1,000. One of the reasons why this has happened is that a lot more older women or older women are generally giving birth more. And as women get older, they're more likely to release more than one egg when they're ovulating. And obviously there's loads of sperm available to be able to fertilize those eggs. So that's one of the reasons why there are more fraternal twins now. The second huge reason why rates are increasing is that because there are more pregnancies now that are a result of fertility treatments. So for example, if the mother is put on Clomid or Clomiphene, that literally stimulates egg production. So if the mother's put on Clomid, it's much more likely that she would release more than one egg at the time of ovulation, and therefore, again, increase the risk of having a fraternal twin pregnancy. Or it's possible that the whole zygote was formed outside the body, like in IVF or in vitro fertilization, where sperm is taken and egg is taken and they're literally placed like in a Petri dish and the zygote is formed outside the body. If more than one of those zygotes is then implanted into the mother's uterus and they both end up developing into embryos and babies, then that mother will be carrying fraternal twins. Genetics also plays a huge role with fraternal twins. So fraternal twins are much more likely to run in families and also just within certain ethnic groups. So another way of saying that is what's actually running in the family, the genetic marker that's running in the family, is that a woman will be releasing more than one egg at the time of ovulation. Now let's talk about identical twins. Identical twins happen when one egg is fertilized by one sperm and the zygote is formed, but several days after the zygote is formed, it splits into two, and each set of cells develops into its own embryo and then its own baby. So by definition, because it all originated from the same sperm and the same egg, each identical twin has exactly the same genetic material. So what's interesting about identical twins or monozygotic twins is that what really matters is how many days after the zygote is formed does it split into two. If the zygote splits, 
at the morula stage, so that's between one to four days after zygote formation, then each embryo will end up with their own placenta and their own amniotic sac. So just like the dizygotic pregnancy, this monozygotic pregnancy will end up being dichorionic and diamniotic. If the zygote splits in the blastocyst stage, so that's between four to eight days after zygote formation, then the identical twins will end up sharing a placenta but having their own amniotic sac. So the monozygotic twins will end up having a monochorionic pregnancy but diamniotic pregnancy. So these are the twins that we call monodi twins. By definition, the identical twins. Division at the 8 to 12 day stage will result in the identical twins sharing their placenta so monochorionic, as well as their amniotic sac, so monoamniotic. So these are the twins that we call monomono twins. Again, by definition, they have to be identical twins. If the zygote divides after 12 days or nearly two weeks after fertilization, then the identical twins don't just share their placenta and their amniotic sac, they also share parts of their body or what we call conjoined twins. Generally, the later the zygote splits and the more the identical twins share, whether it's a placenta or an amniotic sac or obviously the body, then the more medically complicated the pregnancy is. The rate of having identical twins is much lower than having fraternal twins. It sits right at about three in a thousand pregnancies. So obviously much lower than the rate of fraternal twins. Also, what's interesting is that rate has pretty much held steady over the last few decades. So let me just point out a couple of things. The first one is this. If the twins share a placenta or share an amniotic sac, then by definition, those are identical twins. If the twins each have their own placenta and their own amniotic sac, so it's a dichorionic, diamniotic pregnancy, then you don't know. It could be a fraternal twin situation, or they could be identical twins where the zygote just split pretty early. Obviously, you could look at the history. If the parents were going through IVF and two embryos were implanted, then it's a much higher risk that this is actually a fraternal twin pregnancy. But a lot of the time, you don't know. Obviously, there could be some clues. For example, if it's a boy and a girl, then by definition, they're not sharing all their genetic material, so these are fraternal twins. If after the baby's born, they have different blood types, again, they must have different genes, so therefore they must be fraternal twins. But ultimately, unless something really obvious like that shows up, you really do have to do genetic testing on babies to actually figure out whether they're identical or not. I hope you learned something today. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know what you'd like to hear about next. Thank you.